Welcome to Business on Joy News Prime. I want to start with an unfolding story about 7 billion Ghana cities said to have been spent by the previous administration over the last three years cannot be accounted for. Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya disclosed this at the Action Chapel Good Corporate Governance Initiative program held in Accra today. He said this development is making it difficult for the new government to plan because government is yet to establish the true state of the country's finances affecting the 2017 budget presentation. The management of any economy, there is nothing that can beat the integrity of your economic data. Because it's with data that you plan. If you don't have data, you, you have major problems. And, and this, is, this is why we, we really need to emphasize the integrity of data. In preparing for this year's budget, for example, we have been very surprised by the fiscal data, the data on our expenditures and on our revenues. As we interrogated the data to see exactly why our public finances are in the state they are, we find out that there's seven billion Ghana CDs of expenditures that have not been disclosed. And I'm talking seven billion. For ending the year 2016, and these come from 2014, 2015, 2016. So where have they been hiding all these years? And how are you supposed to manage an economy with faulty data. And so we have to emphasize that, you know, getting the data right is really very key because it throws the entire budget into uh, disarray. Because you are going into 2017 and suddenly you are told, by the way, there's seven billion that you have to pay next year that you didn't anticipate. This is the reality. In other news tonight, Minister Designate for Lands and Natural Resources, John Peter Mehu, says he will push for a review of the stability agreement with some mining firms. The current arrangement allows these firms to pay a fixed tax rate for a long period as well as enjoying some tax waivers. Anglo Gold Ashanti, Gold Fields and Newmon currently have a stability agreement with the state. Answering questions from members of Parliament's Appointments Committee, Mr. Mehu said it was time to review the law. Stability agreements across resource-rich nations is becoming a very difficult issue. I am aware, for instance, in Ghana about the Akil Akwa, Professor Akil Akwa's report on the stabilization. Mr. Chairman, host nations sometimes try to protect themselves through clauses in contracts. And one of these clauses is what we call the stabilization. The stabilization contract, Mr. Chairman, in my view, should not be allowed for emerging countries like Ghana. Any country or any oil-rich nation, mineral-rich nation, that will want to impose a stabilization clauses, number one is doing that maybe because of fear of the IOC or the international mining companies of the level of stability in that country. Mr. Chairman, Ghana is a very peaceful country. The democracy that we have enjoyed alone is a credit. And so what is the essence of giving more, you know, stabilization for countries or for IOCs coming from outside countries that have a fear? You introduce stabilization because the IOC may feel that government may take unilateral decision to change the terms of the contract. Some good news for you now. It should be possible to secure a mortgage with your pension contribution before the end of the year. This is because the regulations for this provision in the Tier 3 pension scheme is now almost ready for implementation according to the National Pensions Regulatory Authority. Theme. Contributors are entitled to use their future lump sum to acquire that dream house. The assistant manager of the corporate affairs at NPRA, Rosina Akofi, says they are doing everything to ensure contributors can take advantage of this as soon as possible. Guidelines are being put in place currently 
to be able to get that um, um, mortgage thing streamlined so that because the law said it and it it, it looks like it's it's vague so that's why you are asking me this question so laws are being put or guidelines are being put in place to be able to streamline how this mortgage thing will work for everybody so very soon we will hear about how it works and it will start from the corporate trustees they will tell you that yes now mpra has put a guideline in place and to in order to you know help people sign on if they want to take mortgage or something of the sort so currently just uh, that's what i can tell you that the guidelines are being prepared in order to make way for people to start assessing this mortgage clause in the law but for all i know is that uh, they are almost done the guidelines are almost ready which will soon be given to the trustees in order to work with she was speaking to joy business after the opening ceremony of an informal sector pension campaign dubbed pension for all market series at the Makula market spearheaded by the latest entrant into the pension industry people's pension trust ghana limited the chief executive also highlighted the need for more education on pensions especially among the informal sector players one of the challenges that we are facing is awareness still people have the mindset that pension is still for the formal sector that is one secondly the trust you all know what has happened with the uh, microfinance a lot of people feel like if I'm putting my money away for 10, 20 years, how will I know that when I'm, when I'm on retirement and I want my money back, I'm going to get it? That's why I believe that MPRA, the regulator, can help us, and they are doing it right now, to go on road show and talk to people about pension and let them know that how they as authority are supervising us as a corporate trustee, how they will make sure that the contribution that any contributor pay is secure and that they will get it back. I think awareness and, and roadshow that is something that we could do the pension for all market series is a part of initiatives geared towards boosting patronage of pensions products by players in the informal sector but what has been the response so far a lot of the informal sector including the market women get problems after they get old or they are sick so we think it is very timely and we hope all market women will join. This will not only stop at the first market, they will be going to all market in Greater Accra and as such to the various regions. And I hope if my members in the other regions hear of me about this pension scheme, I know a lot of them will join. This shouldn't be something that you should join when you feel. It must be a must that you have to prepare for your pension. People's Pension Trust is targeting 20,000 persons on the pension scheme by the end of the year. To the Ashanti Regional, where artisans at Suame Magazine say they are positioning themselves to play critical roles in President Ekufuado's One District, One Factory initiative at a Creativity for Commercialization workshop in Kumase. Participants were hopeful their expertise will be required at various stages of implementation. Their hopes could, however, be dashed by obsolete equipment at the Technology Consultancy Center. Chrissy Debra reports. The Technology Consultancy Center of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology seeks to improve and commercialize prototype products. Kwame is a rice farmer from Formina in the Adansi North District of the Ashanta region. He has been struggling to process his produce due to unavailability of right equipment. He has had to hire the only rice treasure accessible to him because he has no money to buy one himself. With support from Technology Consultancy Center, Kwame has been able to fabricate a cheap but efficient rice treasure. As it revolves. The grain is separated from the plant. The rice is then fetched down here. The center is assisting Kwame to improve and commercialize the prototype machine. Dr. Michael Ajalu is director of Technology Consultancy Center. It's made up of a consortium of investors in the U.S., in Africa. In the U.S., we are talking about MIT, we are talking about Olin College and 
um, other investors there. Then we have um, Makarere Investing, we have also invested in Zambia, and then Ghana, and the TCC actually is um, in a part of the network. Now, the whole thing is this. It's a project that identifies problems in communities, and then we bring in both artisans and non-artisans to think through the project and develop a very tangible, workable equipment that can be applied um, to remove drudgery and also effectively to, to be implemented within the community. There is, however, an obstacle. The centre is battling with obsolete machines. Artisans struggle to forge certain designs and complete shadows. So these are old machines that we have used more than 20 to 30 years and uh, they are no more working. I am Dr. Azindazi, um, head of Geobatic Engineering. He believes retooling the facility will place it in good stead to concretize in one district, one factory. They are doing very well over here, um, but I'm telling you, using very old, in, I mean, machines to do that. So if the government could retool the place, I'm sure the product will be very competitive and to bring money to the people. And that the government policy of one district, one uh, factory will be material. Reporting for Joy News, Chrissy Debra. And that will be all the business news tonight. There's more news coming up here on the Joy News Prime. Thank you.